Hi, welcome to the channel. For those who want to upgrade their photo editing skills, I'll be showing you how to use Lightroom for the iPad in today's video. Lightroom is a photo editor which has been around since 2007 and is used by a majority of professional photographers to do their photo retouching and photo management. A lot of beginners might be concerned that Lightroom is complicated or expensive. However, after watching this video, I hope you'll be convinced that Lightroom is actually pretty easy to use. And while it's true that the desktop version must be licensed through a monthly subscription, you'll be happy to know that the iPad version is free to download and install, though it won't have the complete range of editing tools. While professional photographers will want to pay for those missing features, I believe for most people, they'll find the free tools more than enough to correct even the most difficult photo problem. So let's get right into learning how to use Lightroom for the iPad. Let's start with importing photos. Unlike some other photo editors, which allow you to edit photos directly from the camera roll, Lightroom requires you to import the photos into their library first, where it will be managed by Lightroom itself. So how do you actually import a photo? You simply tap on this bottom button here, and you can choose to import from the camera roll or from files. Okay, so if it's camera roll, then you select simply the photos here. So you just simply tap these three dots, tap select mode, and then you can simply choose the photos you want to import. However, for my case, I would import it from files, which I think is a better place to put photos. I'm just going to tap from files, and then I can just tap the select button here, and then just choose the photos that I want to actually import. And then once I'm done, I'm going to tap open, and that will import the photos into the library. And so what you're seeing here is it will be imported into the all photos view. So all photos is a timeline based view of all your Lightroom photos and it's segmented by month. So this is actually arranged according to date. Okay, you can just use your finger to navigate and scroll through your photos pretty easily. So one thing to note is that if you import photos to the library, anything you edit or delete here will not affect the actual photo in the camera roll because this set of photos are maintained by Lightroom. Another thing to note is as you import more photos into this library, this will use up extra storage on the iPad equivalent to the number of photos that you add to the library. So what are some of the things you could do in this all photos view? Number one is you could pinch to make the photos smaller so you can see more of them or you can pinch and zoom to make it larger. So pinch and zoom to make it smaller, pinch and zoom to make it larger. Another thing that you could do is you could of course select photos from here. All right, so you can just long tap as I mentioned to select the photo or you could just tap this button here, the three dots button, select, tap select, and then you can just make the selection as well. So multiple ways to do the same thing. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to edit a photo. So to edit a photo, you simply tap on a photo here in this grid. So let's say this photo right here. So once I tap that photo, it brings us into this loop view. In this view, only one photo is visible at a time. And here you have all the tools and options to apply edits to your photo. So from this loop view, uh, you can navigate in a few ways. The easiest way would just be to use your finger to drag left or right to navigate to the next photo. You could also tap this bottom button here to actually bring out selector where I can select photos from here as well. If you want to select another photo, you can tap back and then just select another photo from here. So there's many ways to navigate in Lightroom. Another thing that is useful to note is if you tap with two fingers, you will be able to see the histogram and you can cycle through some other information here with a two tap gesture. Of course, you can use pinch and zoom to make this photo bigger, bigger, or smaller. All right, how do we edit this photo? Lightroom has some very useful tools for editing, even in their free version. You want to bring up the editing panel by tapping the edit button here. If the editing panel is already visible, then tapping it would actually dismiss it from view. The most important panel is the light panel. So I'm going to tap that and you can see that it brings a bunch of sliders which allow you to control the brightness in your photo. So in this photo, you can see that the shadows are a bit too dark. The light panel is useful for adjusting the brightness of shadows or highlights. And that's the most common adjustment that you're going to actually need. In this case, I want to adjust the shadows because it's a bit too dark. So I'm just going to drag the shadow slider to the right here. And you can see how nicely it brings back the detail in this JPEG image. It correctly detects which parts of this image are the shadows and which parts need to be left alone. So there I've adjusted the shadows. And what else can I do? Maybe the sky here needs to be less bright. So I can drag the highlights down here to make it less bright. You can see that how it brings back the detail in the sky by reducing the exposure of the sky. 
So that's looking pretty good. But one thing that this could use, it could use a little bit more detail. And the best way to do that is through the clarity slider. Okay, so I'm going to tap on effects here. And you'll see there's a slider here called clarity that is used to enhance the contrast in the midtones. Bottom line is the clarity slider will bring back more detail into the image and make it pop a little bit more. All right, so I'm just going to drag that to the right. You can see now how much contrast is being brought into the right parts of this image. So that's the clarity slider right there. Because this is a sunset, what we want to do maybe is to make the scene a little bit warmer, just a little bit like it was during that day. I'm going to tap on color here. And then here you have something called temperature. I can increase the temperature to make it more orange. So I'm going to just adjust that there. Now we don't want to do it too much, but maybe just a little bit. Okay. I like to have my photos more natural. I don't want to over edit photos. So you can actually compare this to the original by long tapping this photo. So if I long tap, you can see the before and the after. Okay, before and the after. So that's one example of editing photos. So you saw that didn't take a lot of time. It's just a few sliders here and it actually works. Another thing that's built into Lightroom is this curves button. So this curves button also allows you to adjust the tones in an image, right? You can make something brighter or darker. Personally, I find Lightroom, especially for iPad or iPhone, it's actually not really necessary to use this curves feature because the sliders of Lightroom do the same thing and are already very good. In other apps, I might use the curves function just because the sliders don't do the job properly. And I find that the curves feature is also more time consuming. All right, so let's try another photo. I'm going to tap the back button to select another photo. So let's try this photo here. So this was taken in a museum and you can see that the image is a bit too warm and a bit underexposed. My camera settings were also off so it was warmer than it had to be but also the temperature of the lights uh, caused this image to look a bit too orange. The thing we want to correct is the underexposure. Here in the shadows it's a little bit too dark so we're just gonna tap on the light item again and just drag the sliders here. Okay now you might say why don't I use the exposure slider. The problem with the exposure slider is it will actually brighten both the dark spots as well as the bright spots. As you can see if I do that if I drag it you'll see that the bright spots become too bright and then you lose it, detail. So in this case, I don't want to drag the exposure slider. I just want to drag the shadow slider. I can also see from this image that the, the helmet in this costume is a bit too overexposed. It's a bit too bright. So I can lower it by dragging the highlights down just a bit. It will be true that this was a raw file. The effect will be even better, but you can still see that even with a JPEG file, it works pretty well. So the next thing I'm looking at here is maybe the contrast is still too great. So I can drag the contrast down. Then the next thing is the orange cast in this image. So to adjust that, I would tap on the color option here and just lower down the temperature. And you can see now how nicely uh, Lightroom works with JPEG to lower down the temperature. Not only did it reduce the orange cast, it actually also brought out the natural colors in this image. So it's looking much better now. Another thing that's useful here maybe is to adjust a little bit of the clarity, put a little bit more detail in it. So I'm going to zoom in to see the effect a bit better. And you can see the zooming in and zooming out work very well in Lightroom. It's a very responsive app with very good performance, as you might expect from an industry standard editing software. So for this, I'm going to tap effects here. And again, just bring back the clarity here, like so just to bring back a little bit more detail. The next thing I'm seeing here, you notice as I zoom in, you can see that there's a lot of noise because this was a very dark scene. We call this color noise and luminance noise. The splotches of color here are color noise. And the free version of Lightroom actually supports reducing color noise and it works really well. So let's tap on detail here. First, let's collapse this effect panel and let's open up the detail panel. And here we can do color noise reduction. So let me show you how it works. So all you have to do is drag the color noise reduction slider to the right. So let's do that and see that. Look at the difference. See, that's before the color noise reduction and this is after. So look at that. Okay, so it's still a little bit grainy. So maybe you want to reduce what you call luminance noise. The noise reduction slider here will actually reduce the luminance noise. So let me just drag it a little bit. You don't want to overdo it. It'll make the image a bit too smooth. Okay, so this one is looking fine. So maybe just uh, lessen that a bit. A little bit of noise is not a bad thing. So there you go. So you see, even as I zoom in, now the noise looks a lot better. Now, if you want to sharpen this image, it's also supported in the free version of Lightroom. And so all I need to do here, just go into sharpening here. Okay, make sure you're zoomed in and just sharpen it a little bit. 
So that's just to sharpen it like so. Okay, you don't want to overdo it because it's already a noisy image. So you don't want to over sharpen. And that's looking good. And so well, the final thing that you could do with this image, perhaps you want to crop out this person here. So Lightroom, just like any other photo editor supports cropping. So I'm just going to tap on the crop tool here. Just make the image a bit smaller like so. And just click done. And that's it, right? Look how much better this image is now. And this is a tough image to, to edit. Okay, so let's do one more just to summarize the points that we have been talking about. So um, this image, again, a bit underexposed in the shadows and the clouds could use a little bit more clarity and less brightness. So let's just adjust it as normal. So we're gonna bring out the shadows, okay, by dragging the slider. Then let's uh, reduce the highlights in the clouds. So look at that, look how nice that clouds look now as you reduce the, the brightness in the sky. And then let's bring back a little bit more color here. So what I'm going to do is tap on color and we can use this vibrant slider to make the image a little bit more colorful. So I'm just going to drag that. So now it's looking a little bit more colorful. You don't want to overdo it again. If you do that, it looks ugly. So just, um, just a tad is good. Make it really look natural. Okay, another thing that you could do here, adjust the clarity. So enhance the details. So I'm going to drag the clarity here. There, that's it. There's now a little bit more pop in this image. And so the final thing I can do here is simply to rotate it or to straighten it. So I'm going to tap the crop slider here and just straighten it a little bit. Okay. And that's looking fine. Those were three photos and you could see how fast I edited those photos. And it's just because Lightroom's tools are very smart. They just work. You don't have to fiddle around too much because Lightroom gets it right almost immediately. So another thing I'd like to show here would be how to reset adjustments. So let's say you want to start from the beginning again for whatever reason, you would just tap this reset button here and you could reset all the adjustments here. So let's say you want to reset everything to the beginning, you just tap the all button and now you're back. Now what if you want to share this image? You can immediately do that by tapping the share button to actually share the image here. Why don't we now export it back to our camera roll? So how do you actually do that? You simply have to select the images you want to export. To select this image, I can long tap it. Okay, so let's look for the other images. Let's select that as well. Okay, so let's select those two images. So those two images now I want to put back to my camera roll. And so I would just select it and then just tap share and then just tap export to camera roll. These images you have edited will also remain in the library. So if you don't want these images to take up too much space, then you have to delete these images from this library. So if you look at the camera roll, you'll see now that the images are there, the two images that we've just edited. It's looking really good. So there you have it. That was how you would use Lightroom. You can see that it's pretty easy to use. It allows you to edit photos really fast. And you can see that the software is very responsive. So what are the drawbacks of the free version? Well, I think the main drawback is you can't edit raw images. So if you want the raw editing feature, then you have to subscribe and it costs around $10 a month. Other features which are missing include the healing brush, which allows you to remove objects. You also do not have a lens distortion correction feature. So if that's important for you, that's only available in the paid subscription version. But other than that, for the vast majority of photos, as long as they're in JPEG, this free version of Lightroom will look really great. And I highly recommend it as an upgrade to other photo apps that you probably are used to. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And till the next video, happy shooting.